My life for a long time was black. I couldn't work, I couldn't go out, um, I didn't talk for days, I didn't eat, I didn't do anything. It was just a big black hole. Oh my God, what was it like? Horrendous. Uh, for two years back, I never went outside the bedroom door. I stayed in there, I didn't want to speak to anybody, I didn't listen to anybody, I didn't answer the door, phone or anything. I stayed in my bedroom. I was struggling with my anxiety and the way I think, my negative thinking. I knew that it was going to be helpful because it, it addresses exactly that, how we think. I came to the Independence Trust and went and had counselling with Zara and she said about the courses. The three P's have really made me understand what's wrong and what's happening in my brain. And it means I can live with it better. I'm able to cope with it better. I learned a lot about how the brain and the mind works. And I felt more powerful, more in control of my anxiety. I didn't feel helpless in the face of it anymore. It was just a way of living a better, happier life. I think about things now instead of all guns blazing going straight in. I do think about what's happening to me now and knowing it's a lot nicer knowing what is happening. I still suffer from anxiety, I still get depression, but I have a life. I've learnt things from doing the course that when my negativity takes over, I find two positives in the situation. So there's always a positive to work towards. It's just you have to find that positive. It's an act of kindness to yourself to make an attempt however much you don't want to do it. And that's another thing that Sarah taught, how we can be kind to ourselves because that is such an important part of healing. It was life-changing that I could do more things, go more places, because I felt like I had um, support with me all the time because of what I'd learned. Hello, my name is Sarah Stevenson and I will be your facilitator for the four sessions which make up the Three Ps workshop. The workshop is called the Three Ps, which stands for positive thoughts, positive actions, and positive interactions. When we are able to experience these three things in our lives, our lives become much happier and easier. However, this workshop is not meant to be used instead of medical intervention. And if you are experiencing any ongoing symptoms of anger, anxiety, depression, or any other mental ill health, you should go and speak to your GP about it. If you are currently taking medication for any mental health condition, do not stop or reduce them without first speaking to your GP or mental health practitioner. You can watch this workshop and practice the actions suggested, regardless of whether or not you are taking medication or having treatment for your mental health, and regardless of whether or not you have received a diagnosis. But it is advisable for you to inform your GP or mental health practitioner that you are doing it. Over the course of this workshop, we will be looking at the basic workings of the brain, what our brain does when we are in danger, how our thoughts affect our brain function, why we experience anger, anxiety and or depression, what we can do to reduce our levels of anger, anxiety and or depression, why we maintain unhealthy habits and behaviours, how we can change our unhealthy habits and behaviours. During each of the four sessions, you may wish to have a pen and paper to hand. I will regularly recap what I have said in each and previous sessions 
and I may also suggest actions that you can choose to carry out if you wish to. You do not have to do any of these. You can choose to do all of these. You can watch any session several times over or just the once. It is your choice what you do with the information that I am going to give you. But please, even if you do nothing else, try to remember that word choice. For it is when we feel that we do not have a choice that we can become and remain ill. Yet in reality, we always have a choice, even if it is just the choice to do something or nothing or to think positively or negatively. Choice is everything, and recognising that we have one is one of the first crucial steps towards living a healthier and happier life. At the end of each of the four sessions, there will be a relaxation session. During this, you can either close your eyes or keep them open. My voice will be accompanied by gentle music. Each of the four workshop sessions will end with a different relaxation session. You can listen to the relaxation session at any time without listening to the first part of the workshop or having listened to it. Again, the choice is yours. Let us begin with one of my favourite quotes which is by Robert Louis Stevenson. There is no duty we so much underrate as the duty of being happy. By being happy, we sow anonymous benefits upon the world. So let's start on the path towards understanding why being happy can be so easy for some of us, yet so difficult for others. I'm going to explain in basic terms the workings of our brain in relation to our environment and how that affects our actions and feelings. This is the bit of our brain that we understand as ourselves and I may refer to it as the core, the conscious part of our brain, the part that interacts with the world. It is attached to a vast intellectual resource which is a part of our brain which we do not share with other animals. When we operate from this intellectual part of our brain, we generally get things right in life. The intellectual part of our brain assesses situations based on facts, not feelings, and is generally incredibly positive. The core is also attached to several other parts of the brain, which, collectively, can be referred to as the primitive part of our brain. The central influential part of this area is called the amygdala and it is situated between the hippocampus and the hypothalamus. The amygdala tends to be responsible for our fight, flight and freeze responses, which can also be regarded as our anger, anxiety and depression feelings. The hippocampus is responsible for our primitive and often inappropriate behavioural experiences and habits. The hypothalamus is responsible for regulating the chemical responses in our body and brain. These three areas always work together. As I said earlier, the intellectual part of our brain is very positive, innovative and happy which therefore makes us behave positively and with a lightness of spirit, whereas the primitive part of our brain is not. It is obsessional, vigilant, negative, and not at all innovative, relying instead on old patterns of behaviour. Let me use a fantasy example to explain how these areas of our brain can affect our behaviour. One sunny day, you decide to go out for a walk. You are operating from your intellectual mind, which says to you that it would be really enjoyable to be outside in the sunshine. Whilst you are out and about, you turn a corner and come face to face with, say, a large and angry looking bear. 
what would your response be? Well, thinking of it in slow motion, your anxiety levels would shoot up, you'd be frightened, you'd lose intellectual control and move from the intellectual part of your brain to the primitive part. Your heart rate would then increase, your stomach would churn, you'd become sweaty and your breathing rate would increase and become shallow. These physical reactions are all necessary to ready you for either fight, flight or freeze. In these fictitious circumstances, this response would be entirely appropriate. You would be pleased with your response. And once you have had a little time to recover from your unusual experience, your intellectual mind would take over again and you would congratulate yourself on a successful response to the situation. And you would then carry on with your day. We can hopefully begin to see that when our primitive mind thinks that, for whatever reason, our life is in some sort of crisis, danger or emergency, it will step in to help. Fight, flight and freeze are all primitive ways to keep us safe but when they affect us as anger, anxiety or depression, they appear much less helpful. Let me try to explain this more. In primitive times, when a caveman looked out of the cave and there was too much snow and ice, or something dangerous like a sabre-toothed tiger out there, he wouldn't go out to hunt. He would return to his cave, pull the rug over his head, and not interact again until the situation had improved. Does this sound like a familiar pattern of behaviour to those of you who experience depression? When the caveman did go out hunting, he would have been on constant high alert to ensure he was not attacked. Does this sound like a familiar feeling to those of you who experience anxiety? And if the caveman did need to defend himself, he would become angry and aggressive, which is the way to increase strength and reduce, or hide, signs and feelings of fear. So, the fight, flight and freeze responses, which are all activated by our primitive mind, are what kept the caveman safe within his environment. They were essential to his well-being. Equally, there are occasions for us all, in current times, when it is appropriate for our primitive mind to kick in to keep us safe. For example, when we're mindlessly about to step off the pavement to cross the road without checking for cars, and an oncoming car honks his horn at us, we would respond to this by either stopping ourselves from crossing or by jumping backwards onto the safety of the pavement again. These instant reactions are driven by our primitive mind and generally keep us safe. However, the primitive mind is a negative mind and it always sees everything from the worst possible perspective. If you think about it, this is important for our self-preservation. If we think back to the bear scenario, it would be no good thinking, oh, he may already have eaten, so I'll just wait and see what he does, as this will probably result in him attacking us. Equally, it would be no good responding to the blast of a car horn by thinking how tuneful it is, as we would probably end up being run over. Much better for our brains to kick in and say, danger, and make us act immediately. Now this is great when faced with real danger, but for many of us who experience mental ill health, the primitive mind is often in control of our thoughts, feelings and actions more often than our intellectual mind, making us respond with anger, anxiety and depression, even when the situation is not actually dangerous. So, we have now established several things the core part of our brain, the bit that makes us who we are, is attached to two other main parts, the intellectual mind and the primitive mind. 
the intellectual mind is optimistic, sensible, innovative and sunny. And when we're operating from this part, life is generally good. The primitive mind is pessimistic, obsessive, vigilant and repetitive. This part of our brain is essential for our general safety, but can kick into action either too much or at inappropriate times. This is now the end of the first session of the workshop, but will be followed in a moment by a relaxation session. During the next session, we will briefly recap on the first session and then take a look at why our primitive mind may be working overtime and causing us to become, and remain, ill. Until then, stay safe and think positive. As you lie yourself back, you can settle down and begin to relax. Just make yourself nice and comfortable. You can notice the weight of your head resting there on the surface and you can be aware of your head relaxing, knowing that the surface it is on will fully support the weight of your head so you don't have to hold any stress or tension in your shoulders or neck. You can just let your head rest back nice and relaxed and let go and you can relax your shoulders too because you know that what you're lying or sitting on will fully support you it can take your full weight your full height every muscle every fiber of your being as you just relax back into it fully supported because now is the time for you to do nothing you don't have to be anywhere you don't have to do anything you can just lie back and relax and your mind can drift and dream as you hear all the sounds around you the sounds outside None of these things need distract or disturb you as they comfortably remind you that the world is still safely turning and you can allow yourself a moment to just rest back, relax and let go. You can let go of any tension in your stomach or across your shoulders. Ease off those muscles in your back and down your spine and along the muscles in your legs, down through your ankles and all the way to your feet, your toes, even your arms and every finger, loosening and relaxing, perfectly at ease drifting and dreaming with your thoughts as you pay attention to your breathing, that gentle rise and fall that happens all by itself. And with every breath you take and with every word I speak, you can just let go. As you continue to relax, begin to visualize the following scene. Imagine yourself walking outdoors. You are walking through the trees. Small trees, then leaves moving in a slight breeze. The sun shines down warmly on you. You continue walking towards a clearing in the trees and as you come closer to that clearing you can see that it is a meadow. You walk out of the trees 
into the meadow where tall green grass blows gently. You are possibly feeling a little bit weary. It would be so nice to sit down in the green grass. You walk further into the meadow now, looking around you. Imagine the meadow in your mind's eye. What does it look like? Find a place to sit. You might want to sit or lie down in the grass, or perhaps you have a blanket with you that you can unroll over the soft grass and lie down on. Feel the breeze caress your skin as you sit or lie down in the sun. It is a pleasant day, warm but not hot, quiet and peaceful. Notice the sights around you, the grass whispering in the breeze. You can see the mix of meadow grasses, clover and wildflowers around you. You can see a small ladybird climbing a blade of grass, climbing up, up towards the top, pausing for a moment and then flying away. Imagine closing your eyes and listening to the sounds of the meadow. You can hear birds singing and the breeze rustling the grass softly around you. You can feel the sun on your face. Imagine turning your face up towards the sky, eyes closed, enjoying the warmth of the sun. You can smell the grass, the wildflowers, the smell of the sun on the earth. Have a look around you again to see the sights around you. Notice how the ground follows gentle contours of hills. See the blue sky above you. A few wispy clouds drifting slowly by. See the trees at the edge of your meadow. The meadow is lush and green, a haven for birds and animals. And as you watch, a deer peers out through the trees and emerges to graze at the edge of the meadow. The deer raises its head to look at you, sniffing the breeze, and then gently turns, disappearing silently into the trees. Rest and luxuriate in this peaceful, beautiful meadow. Notice the sights, sounds and smells around you. Feel the soft grass beneath you, the sun and breeze on your skin. Imagine all the details of this beautiful, safe place.
Now it is time to begin to leave the meadow and return to the present. Start to notice your surroundings. Feel the surface beneath you. Hear the sounds around you. Gently open your eyes and look around, reorientating yourself to your present. Take a moment to stretch your muscles and allow your body to reawaken. And when you are ready, you can return to your usual daily activities, keeping with you a feeling of peace and calm.